Let's look at the universal curette and talk a little bit about advanced instrumentation. So this is the Barnhart one, two. Okay, you use this in first year. And this can be used posterior or anterior. The beauty of a universal curette is that it can be used anywhere in the mouth. So I can do the whole mouth with this one instrument and not has to have to be constantly changing it out from mesial to distal. So this is my favorite instrument. So you can use it on the posterior. So when you decide which end, you place it interproximately. The shank is parallel to the long axis of the tooth. The handle's coming out of the mouth, okay? You wouldn't use this end because if I make the shank parallel, the handle is going down the patient's throat. Okay, so this end would be for the facials. You would flip it. The other end would be for the linguals. Okay, so facial to lingual, you're flipping ends in the same quad. So I can, I can do the distal here of number 30. I can bring it around, do the facial, and I can do the mesial here of 30 because it's got cutting edges on both sides of it. Now I can do the distal of 29. I can walk it around the facial with the tip pointing forward, and then I can come and do the mesial of 29. Okay, so I can, I can do everything in the mouth with this one instrument. Okay, if I were to go to the maxillary here, I would have to flip the end and again, put it in approximately. Shank is parallel to the long axis and the handle's coming out of the mouth. So here I can do distal of number three. I can come across and do the facial and I can do the mesial. So I can do the mesial here of three and the distal of four without having to switch if I was using Gracie's, I'd have to be switching from the 11, 12 to the 13, 14. So really nice. Another nice thing you can do with this, and this is a curette, so it's got the rounded toe. It doesn't have a point. So what I like to do with this is, is sometimes the direct distal of these last molars, there's a little groove there, and sometimes you get calculus in it. So I can go here from the mesial, or I'm sorry, from the facial, and then I can go from the lingual. But it's hard to reach directly in the back. So what I do with this is I have the, have the patient open and I try to look directly at the occlusal, and I'll take this instrument, and because it's got a rounded toe, I can kind of pull it around here like in a, just pull it around the disc like a swiping, sweeping kind of motion. I can use the other end and go from the facial to the lingual, and I just kind of pull it around subgingively, and I'm making sure I've got this one edge on the tooth. So it's, it's kind of hard to see, it's easier to see in the mouth, but you can pull it all the way around, and right there, sometimes is where you get a little calculus, and you can just get it off really easily by just pulling this around, kind of like sweeping it around the distal of that last molar, okay? On the anteriors, I think you learned the crossover, um, and that's great. What your book actually says is look for the outside cutting edge. So if I'm looking at this, sorry, if I look at this, this forms like a box. So to me, this is the outside, and this would be the inside of the box. So it's the outside that you would be using, the outside cutting edge on the anterior teeth, okay? So if I want to go to number 24, um, this would work on the, for the facial, this would work on the distal of 24. And there you have that crossover, okay? It would be the distal of 23 and the distal of 22. And then I would flip the end, and again, I'm looking for the outside cutting edge over here. So this would do the mesial of 22, mesial of 23, mesial of 24, and that's the way it's designed to work in the mouth. So it's it's kind of the same, it's the crossover, and they talk to you about 
you're not looking into the face. I think the face is closed on the tooth and then it's crossing over like that. So it, it's a, it gives you the same result, but it's just a different way to think about it. And we can talk about that more later if that's something that you wanna kind of look at. But it's always the outside cutting edge, only in the anterior, okay? So the outside, if you think about this as a box, this is the outside, this would be the inside of the box if you had two other sides here. Okay, but again, this is a really nice instrument. It also works really nice in the anteriors, just like if you've got a little calculus down here. Again, you can kind of, because it's a rounded toe, you can kind of pull it just right down in that sulcus like that. Pull it across. So different ways of using this instrument.